more I find out and discover about God's grace, I understand why the songwriter said it's amazing. God's grace is amazing. When you think about what his grace accomplishes for us, in his grace we have identification. Paul says, by the grace of God, I am that I am. Oh, my God. I could park it right there and have a wonderful time. Hallelujah. And then we, not only do we get identification, but how many of you know that our salvation is by grace? Oh, come on, I got Bible for that. <laughs> Ephesians, what is it, 2 and 8? By grace are we saved. By grace and through faith. Right? So uh, we got identification uh, through grace. We got salvation through grace. Let me see if I can find another Asian. <laughs> through grace. How about we got education <laughs> through grace. I got Bible for that. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 uh, says to us that, that grace teaches us. It teaches us how to walk in godliness. Oh my God. It teaches us. How many of you know that grace will teach you? Hallelujah. It will teach you. Yes, it will. Hallelujah. Y'all just look like y'all want one more, so I'm going to give you one more just because you look like you want one more. Let me see if they want one more online. Hallelujah. Uh, y'all want one more online? Yeah. I know they want, it, they want it here in the sanctuary. I don't know. I'm trying to see if y'all want it online. So what we got? Identification. Identification. We got salvation. We've got education. Okay, how about this one? I'm going to give you two quickly and get out of here. Sanctification. Hallelujah. Sanctified by grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Randolph, I got to find one more. Throw me one, Randolph. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Justification. We are justified by grace. Oh, that's a powerful teaching in Romans. We are justified by grace. Well, the lazy theologian defined grace as just as if. God deals with us just as if we didn't do something or sin. Just as if we didn't sin. How many know, but you did sin. But he deals with you just as if. Let me get a, let me not be lazy tonight and go just a little di deeper. And so justification uh, can be dis defined as the act of declaring us righteous. He declares you righteous. Now, you, you ain't going to get happy unless you really know you wasn't right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, but he declares us righteous. Hallelujah. And, and that's something because it, 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 it's really uh, important that we learn this, you know, because so many times we, we, we base our position in God 
based upon what we do or, want, or, or what we don't do. That's legalism. And so many times the church, especially you Pentecostal folk, have been guilty <laughs> of, of, of sending folk to hell and telling them they don't have salvation because of what they did or what they didn't do. And so I thank God for the powerful teaching of Paul in Romans because he lets us know, he, he, he really introduces us, watch this, to what the Latins say, sola fide, S-O-L-A, fide, F-I-D-E, okay? Sola fide, okay? And the doctrine of sola fide is that we are saved by faith alone. You understand? You are faith, you are saved not by what you do, but you are saved by what you believe. Oh my God. Woo, that's dancing material right there, prophetess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop letting people put you in evangelistical, evangelical straitjackets. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and understand that, 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 and Paul explains this. I may be getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm flowing. My God, y'all want me to go with the flow of the north, don't you? <laughs> and, uh, you know, as, but, 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 but you, you have to understand. See, uh, the reason that we can be uh, the reason why we are saved by faith alone, alone is because what you believe and what you receive in the word of God, what you receive in your heart, Paul teaches us, okay, it will cause you to be dead to sins, to different sins and temptations. You, you, you know what it means to be dead to sin? Can I tell you what it means to be? You can go ahead and pass these out. Y'all don't fool with them until. I got some grace notes that will help you tonight. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do with my online students and, 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 and listeners uh, because you can't get the... Uh, worksheet, but you can call in or email us and, and we'll send you the worksheet. We are on our second worksheet and uh, I want you to embrace the worksheet. <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll be able to reflect on it. And you know, you know, you got to get the word of God in your heart. 99% of the time when the Bible mentions heart, uh, he's talking about the mind, not the physical heart, okay? And so when the word of God said, uh, thy word have I hidden, where did I hid, hide it? In my heart. I ain't hide it in this physical thing. It's in my mind. Why? Because uh, I think it's Proverbs 23, 19, somewhere, 23, something, somewhere in there, says, as a man thinketh, where? In his heart. In his mind. So is he. You become what's in your mind. Do you understand that teaching? My God, that's why the devil is after your mind. You understand? If the devil gets your mind, he has asset, access to every part of your life. Come on, let's decree and declare today. Devil, you, Satan, you can't have my mind. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all do it, on, do it on, on, online. Satan, you can't have my mind. Hallelujah. This is why 
Paul says, uh, Philippians 2, maybe verse 5, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's ask him. Father, give me the mind of Christ. Come on, if you ask him, he'll do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Scripture says you have not because you ask not. Come on, ask him for his mind. Hallelujah. The mind is so powerful, and Jesus understood this in order to embrace the concepts of the kingdom, in order to embrace kingdom concepts. Let me have one of those worksheets so I'll make sure I cover that stuff. <laughs> in order to embrace kingdom concepts, you have to have a renewed mind. You understand? Because uh, the Bible says, uh, what, when Jesus, uh, we say, preached this first message in Matthew 4 and 17, he says, repent. All right. Uh, in a word, what does the word repent mean? Come on, throw some things at me. Those of you that are viewing online, come on, give me a word that will tell me what the word repent means. What does it mean to repent? Somebody said return, Re to turn, okay? Don't y'all be cheating now because that ain't going to give you the right. Uh, the English, I'm, not, I, I'm speaking uh, of the Greek now. Because when Jesus says, uh, repent, he ain't talking English, <laughs> okay? You need to know what it means in the scripture, okay? Are you ready? I'm still looking. I can't see anybody. Oh, God bless. Who is that? Queen Angela Leonard. Tony Cooper is with us. God bless you. Uh, Drina Penn is with us. Oh, God bless you, Sister Drina. Uh, Denise Godot, God bless you. Larry Oates, I see you. Jodine Macklin, oh my God, out of Flint, Michigan. Yes, God bless you, Sister Jodine Macklin. All right. Uh, I need you all to put in the comment box, what, what do you... Uh, how do you interpret repent? Let me give this to you. Really, when you look at the word repent, watch this. In the Greek, it means to change the way you think. In order for you, watch this, uh, Sister Tangela, in order for you to turn you got to change the way you think because the mind is the control tower. You understand? Uh, the Bible talks about fornication and, and different sins. They start in your mind. Huh? Don't be talking about oops. <laughs> It was an accident. No, that thing developed in your mind. So Jesus says in order to embrace the concept, repent. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and, and you, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? And in order to be a part of the kingdom, you got to change the way you think. Uh, listen, the way you've been thinking in the world will cause you to be denied citizenship in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You won't be able to embra embrace the teachings, the concepts of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I thank God. I'm in this world, but make no mistake about it, I'm not of this world. 
You, got, you never forget that. Because this world, world's culture is not consistent with kingdom culture. Do you understand? Things that the world tolerates are things that will call you, cause you to be uh, eliminated <laughs> from the kingdom of God. You, you hear me what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And so we want the mind of Christ. And it's so easy to, to be lured in to the concepts and thinking of this world. You know, that's why you got to guard the gates of your body. You understand? What are the gates of your body? Your eyes. So if it's a gate, that means you got to watch what you're looking at. Oh, my God. Oh, God. You got to watch what you're looking at, and you got to watch what's looking at you. <laughs> Some of y'all watch TV until it's watching you. <laughs> y'all ain't saying that. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Say have mercy. Say something. <laughs> oh, y'all leave me out of here. You understand? So you got to guard. You guard your mind by guarding the gates. See, what you watch, what you, what you look at can shape, can shape what you think. Do you understand that? You see something enough and it'll shape your, or what you think about it. You know, I had friends in Flint that uh, I would, who were athletes with me and, and, and sometime we would gather at their house. Uh, my mother wouldn't let me spend the night. <laughs> y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> uh, y'all had that kind of mama. <laughs> She wouldn't let you spend the night, and she wouldn't let everybody spend the night at your house. Huh? Uh, because now y'all just let anybody come over, and you let your babies go. But, you know, you have to understand, and I got to get back to that, but let me interject this. There are spirits that roam the earth. Now, I want y'all to get this. And you know what they're looking for? They're looking for a body. Do you understand that? Your body, my body, somebody tell you anybody. <laughs> you understand? Why? Because in, can I tell you why? I ain't going to tell you unless at least 20 people online ask me why. <laughs> I need 20 people in here to ask me why. Why what? Why what? What do you want to know why? Now understand it. Because in Genesis, I want you to get this. This is powerful teaching. Listen, you may not dance on this, but I promise it will change your mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, according to Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 26. God gave dominion over the earth to man. You understand that? So watch this. So because he, and I think it's Psalms 139 that says that God, watch this, puts his word above his name. Oh my God. Oh, a shout almost came on me right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, so God, if he said it, he respects what he says himself. And so he gives dominion of the earth to man. 
So watch this. When he does this, it becomes illegal for spirits to operate in the earth without a body. So they are, they are roaming the earth looking for what? Do you understand that? Now y'all think he, these spirits are just looking for old bodies. But you got to, that's why you got to uh, protect these young people. And you know, the Bible says, you know, the, the devil roams the earth like a lion. He's not a lion. God, we got the lion of Judah. Hey, glory to God. But he, you know, he's always pretending to be something he's not. You know, he's the father of lies and deception. So watch this. So, so, so a lion, when he sees a flock of what is that called? Gazelles? It, 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 in the plains and, 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 and they're running when they see the lion and then maybe the, the little baby gazelle falls. The lion doesn't say, I'm not going to eat her now because she's just a baby. He started licking his chops saying, Oh, we're going to have easy eating tonight. You understand that? That's why we've got to protect our young people. Hallelujah. Pray over them. Hallelujah. Protect them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pray. Hallelujah. That God would cover them. Cover them with his grace. Cover them. Cover them with, hallelujah, his spirit. Cover them. Hallelujah. How I many of you know God will cover your children if you pray for them? Hallelujah. I remember when my children were young, I would go in the room. Hallelujah. And just while they slept, oh, I'd have a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Where I get that from? Because my mom would do that. I'd wake up, peek. And see my mom praying over me. Hallelujah. I don't know about, about you, but I believe in prayer. I honestly believe that prayer changes things. And not only will prayer change things, but I came to teach you tonight that prayer will change you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we praise God. We praise God. Ah, I see some more have joined us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, Sister Paulette, look at this. I'm talking about my children and my daughter Candace <laughs> is online. Love you. <laughs> and, uh, she's a sweetheart and she is the result of answered prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible teaches that when you bring the child up right, hallelujah, the children will be the rewards of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, and so, it's so important that we understand that the devil wants our minds. Hallelujah. But God wants us to understand that how you think can determine, hallelujah, your victorious walk with him. And so we thank in God, we are thanking God for his grace, his grace, his grace. And uh, I want you to know that there is, in fact, we thank God for not only his grace, we thank God for his tender mercies. Amen? And uh, 
it's important for us to understand that uh, there is a difference between grace and mercy. How many of you understand that there's a difference between, we, we kind of try to use them interchangeably, but really there is a difference between grace and mercy. Grace or, or mercy is the act of, I don't know, that might be on your worksheet. Yeah, oh, you need the word there, don't you? <laughs> the act of withholding deserve punishment. Did you get that? Mercy is the act of withholding deserved punishment. Oftentimes you see in the Bible where uh, people who were afflicted cried out, Lord, they didn't say have grace, they said have, have mercy. How I many of you know there are some things that you deserve? Uh, <laughs> the law of karma says whatsoever man soweth <laughs> that shall he also reap. But let me, let me add grace to that. Whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. Reap, but the attribute of grace helps to cushion his reaping experience. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many have ever had a cushion <laughs> for your reaping ex experience? <laughs> Hallelujah. You failed and it hurt, but it didn't hurt as much as it could have. Do I got a witness in the, in the house? Hallelujah, glory to God. And I'm looking at those who are responding online and I'm pulling them up late. <laughs> but they, they are responding and I thank God for you. God bless Brother Rodney Johnson, uh, our assistant director of women for GCFC is watching us tonight, Ruthie Warren, and uh, we praise God for you. All right. The, okay. I see some of you that are in here are online too. God bless you. God bless Sister Paulette. All right. So, uh, mercy is the act of withholding deserved punishment, while grace is the act of endowing unmerited favor. Do you understand that? Mercy is the act of withholding deserved punishment, but grace is the act of endowing unmerited favor. In his mercy, God does not give us punishment we deserve. You understand that? In his mercy, God does not give us the punishment we deserve. What do we deserve? Huh? The wages of sin is, is death. Romans 6 and 23, right? So we deserve death. Why y'all acting like y'all not guilty? Guilty as sin and acting like you ain't guilty. Okay, I'll testify. I'm guilty as child. I stand accused as, as Isaac Hayes used to say. <laughs> oh, I just dated myself, didn't I? <laughs> I just dated myself. <laughs> Abraham, you don't know nothing about Isaac Hayes, do you? Well, they playing Isaac Hayes in Africa, in the bush country. <laughs> Come on, stay focused, Hutchins. <laughs> okay. So, in his mercy, God does not give us punishment, the 
punishment we deserve, namely death or hell, while in his grace God gives us the gift we do not deserve. Do you understand that? The gift of God is eternal life. Do you understand? So I thank God because in his grace, ha, he gave me eternal life. Hallelujah. In his mercy, hallelujah, he withheld the punishment that I deserved. I guess what I'm, I'm trying to show you is mercy withhold something uh, that you deserve by some authority that has the ability to do that. While grace endows or, watch this, gives. Do you understand? Grace gives while mercy withholds. But grace gives something you don't even deserve. Do you understand? God said, you don't deserve it, but I'm going to give it to you. Why? Because I'm God. Hallelujah. And Romans 9 and 15 says, I'll bless who I want to bless. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, don't you thank God for being the kind of God who doesn't consult your past, who doesn't consult your enemy in order to bless you? Hallelujah. Y'all don't know. A praise go right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We praise him for that. And so, we, you know, the more we learn about grace, the more amazing it becomes to us, right? You know, I used to always say, I mean, uh, you know, we used to always be told to say grace at the table before we eat. <laughs> it never dawned on you. As a child, I never did understand, what does that mean? <laughs> Say grace. And sometimes we were a little smart, Alex, and we just say grace. <laughs> you said say grace. <laughs> grace. <laughs> I'm looking at some of y'all, but some of y'all did it too. I know you did it. I know you did it. A little smart, Alex. <laughs> yeah. But watch this, the saying of grace is really something that uh, is interesting because it comes from a Latin word, and I don't know, I think it's a space on your worksheet for it. Okay, I'm gonna see how you spell it. <laughs> Uh, gratuorum, gratuorum, gratuorum atio. That's what, uh, uh, where we get, and, and, and let me say this, gratuorum atio, atio, A-C-T-I-O, gratuorum, G-R-A, I never would have won the spelling bee, but you, you wouldn't either. <laughs> uh, G-R-A-T-I-R-U-M, gratuitum, okay, actium. And what that means is acts, acts, A-C-T-S, acts of thanksgiving. You understand? So when you say grace, you are... Bef you are showing an act of thanksgiving, acknowledging that the food that you're getting ready to eat has not been pro provided for you 
by your credit card. <laughs> you don't hear me. It is acknowledging that everything that you're about to eat is a result of the goodness of a most gracious God. That's why you should always say grace before you eat because it acknowledges that the reason I'm eating, hallelujah, the reason that I have, the reason, hallelujah, is because Jehovah Jireh, the provisionary God has made provision for me. How I many of you know he's a provisionary God? Hallelujah, glory to God. And so that's why, you know, I, you ever been at the table and, 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 and people just go to eating and, 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 and okay, I know it's for you sometime, but slow your roll, slow your roll. <laughs> and give thanks and acknowledge God. You know, and, and you know, Jesus taught us you know, before he fed the 5,000. The Bible said he sat down and he gave thanks. Huh? Hallelujah. Before the Lord's supper, he gave thanks. Hallelujah. And so, uh, that, that, that's, that's where that I thought since we were talking about grace, I just threw that in there. It ain't gonna cost you nothing extra. I, just, I thought you might wanna know why we say grace. <laughs> All right? Okay, so I want to uh, go to the book of Romans because it is in the book of Romans that we see such a powerful manifestation of the word of God. Uh, you know, when the book of Romans was written, Paul is in Corinth, and, 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 and so many things have already taken place. He, he's, he's been with God now about 20 years. Hallelujah. How many of you know when you've been with God a little while, you see things a little differently, you know. Uh, 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 he, he's, he's been with God about 20 years now, and, and he's, he's in Corinth, but he's concerned with Rome. He's concerned with the saints at Rome, and it's important to understand that he's not writing, writing to unbelievers. This message isn't to unbelievers. The, this message is to believers. And I think it's the first chapter, maybe verse 5 or 6, he calls them saints. Ooh, I want to deal with that just a little bit. He calls them saints. Uh, what are saints? Y'all ain't saints. <laughs> what are saints? Anybody know what a saint is? Uh, listen, I found a definition uh, by Donald Gray Barnhouse. I thought it was worth writing down and sharing with you. He says, saints are a group of displaced persons uprooted from their natural home and on their way to an extraterrestrial destination, not of this planet, neither in its roots or its ideas. Wow. Did you understand that? A saint is somebody that understand this ain't his home. <laughs> Y'all thought a saint was somebody that crossed every T and dotted every I. 
A saint is a group of, I like the way he says this, a group of displaced persons. In other words, you know, it's something how the word of God comes together. John says, love not the world, neither the things of the world. How many of you are guilty of loving the world? Y'all ain't going to tell the truth. All I'm going to tell you is, if you're guilty, stop it. <laughs> Listen, you can't love God and love this world. You know, the, the, we love things. You, you know, you got, you've got to learn. My, my, my little pal, Paulette's, Paulette's. <laughs> I want you to understand, don't love the things of this world. They'll mess you up. The things of this world, y'all don't believe it, but I'm going to tell you anyway, they're only imitations of life. I got Bible for you. The Bible says a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things in which he possesses. And yet we spend our life trying to possess things. Child of God, I want to encourage you to stop grinding to possess things and start grinding to possess the more of God. Hallelujah. Kingdom priority, Matthew teaches us in the sixth chapter. Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Hallelujah. And then all these other things. God said, I'll add them to you. Don't worry about it. It, 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 it comes with uh, 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 being a part of the kingdom. You know, I did a series on, 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 on the kingdom and kingdoms. And I, you know what I found out? That when you study monarchs or monarchical, monarchical governments where there is a king, what makes a king a good king? Uh, what makes a king a great king? Watch this is he, his ability to cause the people in his kingdom to prosper. In other words, it's not that he's got everything, but he's making provision for the people in the kingdom. Kingdom, you understand that? And so, and so what makes a good king what makes people from, say, another kingdom want to be a part of his kingdom is because they found out over there, you know, over here we just getting bread and water. But over here, they getting steak <laughs> and potatoes and, and vegetables. You understand? So it makes them want to leave that. I want you to know that we have the best king and he's a great king because over here, hallelujah, people are being blessed in this kingdom. Oh, I don't need to ask somebody, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? In this kingdom, hallelujah, sick bodies are being healed in this kingdom. He causes us how he gives us the ability to obtain wealth. According to the scriptures in Deuteronomy, it is God who causes us to get wealth. Hallelujah. What a kingdom. What a kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, there's provision in this kingdom because he's a provisionary God. 
he's a provisionary king. And so, Romans is an amalgamation of the grace of God. Let me give you an outline for Romans. Uh, the first eight chapters are doctrinal. Now this, I think, may have been on worksheet one. Uh, so you can write it on the back. Uh, you need an outline for Romans. Zero through eight chapters are doctrinal. It is the most, uh, Romans is the best doctrinal teaching because, you know, Romans is really, it's not in chron chronological order in your Bible because actually Galatians, uh, Thessalonians, uh, they were all written uh, before Romans, uh, Corinthians. It was written before Rome, Romans. So Paul's ha ha Paul has a lot to, uh, to take from, to put into Roman, Romans. God has already spoke to him through these other books. You understand? And so the doctrinal teaching, uh, for instance, the first three chapters in Rome, in, in Romans, uh, they, they talk about, they speak of three basic types of people. Three basic types of people in the first three chapters of Rome. Romans, got it? Would you like to know what those three basic people are? Okay, firstly, uh, Brother Thomas, Deacon Thomas, if you don't want to know, you sure acting like you want to know. <laughs> you sure got me fooled. Okay, three different kind of people. The first person is the pagan man. It speaks about the pagan man who has never heard the gospel. Okay. The second kind of person is the moral man. The moral man is the man who strives to live a good life. And then the third person in these first three chapters is the religious man. Okay? And the religious man he is the man who keeps all the rules and regulations. Okay? Now notice these three. The pagan man, the moral man, and the religious man. Three, three kind of people in the first three chapters. Now which one of them is you? <laughs> okay? Now watch this. Uh, all three stand condemned because their righteousness is not adequate to avoid offending a perfect and holy God. Do you understand that? Even though you have these three kind of people, they're condemned because their righteousness the, the pagan man, he ain't got enough word in him because he ain't never heard the word he, to be righteous. Huh? The moral man, he's, he, he, he's trying to live right. That's some of y'all. He's trying to live right, but, you know, Romans, the seventh chapter, really talks about the battle of the moral man because... How many of you know that there's a war going on inside of every person? You have, in, inside of every Christian, 
there's a war going on. You have the spirit warring against the flesh. Do you understand that? That, that? that war is evident in all of us. Paul said it was evident in him. And he said seven in chapter 7, maybe verse 22. He said, when I would do good, when I would be morally right, <laughs> evil is always, come on, is that your testimony? I'm trying to do the right thing, but I got a war going on. Who am I talking to? There's a war going, there's a battle that is going on. Can I tell you, who wins the battle of the spirit and the flesh? Can I tell you who wins the battle? The one you feed the most. He gonna be the strongest. Do you understand that? If all you do is look at TV, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Is all you, if all you do is go to the movie, is all you, if all you do is listen to worldly music, oh, I didn't stepped on somebody's sacred cow. Why, why, you got to watch the music that you listen to. I need to talk to somebody. Y'all get TJ's new CD out and, and put that in your car and stop listening to Mary Blige and Mary J. Blige and you understand. That, that music is not always consistent with the will of God. Y'all don't hear me talking to you. Uh, for you. Let me give you an example real quick. Mary Blige, you know, apparently was going through some changes in her life and, and she wrote a song talking about, I'm going down. Why? How you know that? <laughs> Look at the missionaries and the mothers know the words to mother to, to, to Mary J. Blige. Oh my God. You gotta see that's not consistent with scripture. The devil is a lie. I ain't going down because somebody left. That, that ain't Bible. Uh, scriptures declare I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah, glory to God. The devil is a lie. Huh. I'm going down. No, no I'm not, I'm coming up. Mess with me and I'll be greater than I was. Y'all ain't gonna say that. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm talking to somebody now that has been discouraged and ready to throw in the towel because somebody has left you. Sometime you got to take another look and tell somebody you look better gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes we are involved in relationships that are not godly relationships and they drain us and pull us away. Hallelujah. From our Savior. Hallelujah. Any relationship that does not strengthen your faith in God is the wrong relationship. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I declare I'm talking better than you talking back to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, and so we must understand that God wants us Paul, 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 Paul says to us that, and, and I love Paul because I can identify with, with Paul on so many levels. Uh, Paul says, he's honest and he's, he doesn't brag and boast in himself, but he says he boasts, hallelujah, in his God. And not only his God, but what his God is doing through him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know it looked like I was showing off the other day. I told you I had, uh, 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 when I had uh, surgery 
on my cerebrum. I had a blood clot that had launched and the mothers checked me the other day because I was apologizing for keep telling the story. As they, they, they told me, they said, we walked in after prayer one day, they walked in my office and said, Pastor, don't you say that no more. Oh, you tell that story every time you get a chance. You tell what God has done for you. She said, I took your testimony to uh, one of, I think it was her brother or some relationship to her. She said, I took it. It was on tape and I took it and let him see it. And it blessed him so. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's no secret what God can do. What it does for others. Oh my God, is it shouting time? Hallelujah. What it done for others. That's why I can rejoice in your testimony. Because the same God that did it for you, he can do it for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Paul says, I identify with him. Paul did not always walk circumspectly to God's divine will. Hallelujah. But watch this. Paul, Paul says, and isn't it something when God makes choice of you? You know, Jeremiah talks about how God called him in his mother's womb. Hallelujah. Isn't it something how God made choice of you? Look, you got... Friends that, that are outside of the body. How many of you got some friends? You got family members that are outside. Why are you? Hallelujah. Why did God make choice of you? I'm going to get into that in just a minute. But uh, God made choice of you. He made choice of us. Hallelujah. Paul says, it's something how God had called him because, you know, he changes his name from Saul to Paul. And, and, and did you know that the name Paul means least? Hallelujah. Little one. So Paul says, I'm least. I am the least of all. Here's a man who spoke several different languages, Hallelujah. Out of the 27 books of the New Testament, he has written 13 of them. Hallelujah. But he says, I'm the least. God deliver us from arrogant preachers, arrogant preachers. Uh, you know, some preachers, uh, that's, that's, they're, they're so prideful. And, and, and what I was trying to tell you is, yeah, how Paul boasted what God was able to do through him. Hallelujah. And so when I tell you the neurologist would come in the room and tell me to say the uh, names of the, the months of the year backwards. You know, I'm like, I couldn't say that before I had the stroke. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I come to tell you that sometimes God takes you to do some things to make you better than you were before. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm better than I was before. So I ain't showing sure off when I say December, November, October, September. I, I, I ain't showing sure off August. Hallelujah. June, July, May, uh, uh, April. Hallelujah. March. February, January, I ain't showing sure off. I'm just trying to boast in what God can do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm better. Scriptures flow off my tongue now. I, I, I very seldom have a whole bunch of notes because God has anointed me. Hallelujah. He's touched my mind. The enemy tried to destroy my mind, but God spared my mind. He said, I want to use his mind for my glory. And I give him praise. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think about where he brought me from, hallelujah, I've got to give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. I'm about ready to dance. 
I told Randolph I, I haven't did uh, anyway. Uh, uh, and so the epistle of Romans is a part of the triology on a key verse on a key verse from the prophet Habakkuk. Let me see if I can go through this real quickly. Triology, that means a group of three. Okay, Habakkuk says, the just shall live, how they gonna live? By faith. So look how, the, how, how, how uniquely the uh, Bible is structured. Uh, the, the question, who are the just, is answered by the book of Romans. Okay? The question, how shall they live, is answered by the epistle of Galatians. Okay? Triology, we need the third one. Y'all want the third one? Or y'all want me to leave y'all out there hanging? <laughs> huh? The just shall live by what? What shall they live by? Okay, so the third part of that triology, first, the first two parts of that triology is one is the book of what? Romans, which answers the question what? Who? Who are the just? The next part of that triology is Galatians, which answers the, addresses the questions, how shall they live? Is that right? Okay, so the third part of that triology is, answers the question, what shall they live by? Faith. And that is answered by the book of Hebrews. So you see the triology there? Romans, Galatians, and Hebrews. You got it? And, and, so, uh, and, and so what this does, in essence, it, it helps us to understand I wrote this down and I want to read it to you. Here's a question. What is the greatest possible thought? What is the greatest possible thought? Daniel Webster answers this question. I'm going to tell you what he says. What is the greatest possible thought? Our responsibility to our maker to meet this ultimate challenge of life, we have to know something about God. What is, what is he like? What is his personality? What does he require? That's the greatest thought is, what is our responsibility to our God? Romans answers that. What is the greatest responsibility? What is your greatest response? Don't you want to know what your responsibility is to God? What does God require of you? Hallelujah. If you want to be blessed by God, you got to know what he requires of you. Can I tell you, the main requirement of God for the believer is to know him. 
Paul says, oh, that I might know him. To know God. When you know God, you'll trust God. Hallelujah. When you know God, watch this, you'll love God. Did you get that? Hallelujah. The reason that we don't love him like we need to love him is because we don't know him like we need to know him. You know, if people really desire to know God like they need to know him, uh, uh, Bible study classes across the globe, across the country would be full, packed jam. But, if, you know, you call a Bible study, it's almost like calling a bear meeting. Call a Bible study meeting, you might as well be calling a bear meeting. <laughs> you understand? Because people don't understand the significance of learning and knowing God. You understand? Knowing God and knowing his requirements increases your faith. I give the working definition for faith is, I give the definition is, what you know about God. Faith is what you know about God. So the more you know about God, the more faith that you ha will have. Now, okay, maybe we need to deal with what is faith. We often go to the Hebrew scripture, Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What does that mean? Y'all always say that, but <laughs> what does that mean? It's so important to know what faith is because the Bible says, same Hebrews 11, it says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Y'all different generation because the old folk used to say, I just want my ways. Oh, glory to God. I just want my ways to please the Lord. Anybody here want to please God? Hallelujah. You can't please him without faith, and you can't have faith without knowing the more of God. Oh, man, I just threw you a brick. You better catch it and build on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you hear me? Faith is the substance. What is a substance? Substance uh, is something tangible. Huh? Substance is uh, the house you've been praying for. Faith is the car you've been praying for. Substance. Something you can put your hand on, huh? Faith. Uh oh, watch that. I'm going to get in trouble with this one. Faith is the spouse you've been praying for. <laughs> you understand substance? Something tangible. Okay, let me help you, some of you. I'm going to help some of you on that last row. Faith is the money you've been praying for. It's the money you've been hoping for. Now watch this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith is the money you've been praying for and it is the evidence 
that the money you've been praying for is your money. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You understand, so many times we come to the throne of God and, and we, 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 come, we come before the court of God and, and, and we claim stuff and we have no evidence that the stuff that we're claiming is our stuff. And so when you come to the court of God and ask for things, you got to have evidence. What is the evidence? You got to come to God's court and tell him, God, you said uh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the, you, you all hear me, you said, hallelujah, that Hallelujah, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and by his stripes I am healed. You said it, hallelujah. You said, I got evidence. Hallelujah, I got evidence I'm supposed to prosper. I got evidence I'm supposed to be blessed. I got evidence I'm supposed to be healed. I've got evidence, hallelujah. Hallelujah, that I'm blessed and cannot be cursed. I've got evidence. Hallelujah. Do you understand that now? So faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the thing you've been praying for. And the evidence that the stuff you've been praying for is your stuff. Somebody praise God for your stuff right now. I feel God releasing stuff. Ah, oh, by faith, I feel him releasing stuff in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my faith. Thank you for my stuff. Thank you for increasing my faith. And so, I finished the outline of, of Romans Chapter 1 through 8 is doctrinal. And then chapters 9 and 11 is dispensational. Uh, I'll deal with that. Uh, dispensation deals with the period of time. It deals with Israel's past, present, and future. Now, why do I need to know Israel's past, present, and future? I'm not Jewish. Well, because your inheritance is connected with Israel. You don't hear me talking to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then chapters 12 through 17 uh, uh, deal with uh, practical living. They are practical. So you got chapters 1 through 8 are what? Doctrinal. Chapter 9 and 11 is? Look, at, oh boy, I got a class in here. I don't know what y'all doing online, but this class in the sanctuary is ready. Are y'all ready? Uh, and, uh, and of course, the last chapters from 12 on are practical. You understand that? All right. Now, Romans teaches us that the path to maturity, how many of you want to grow in God? You got to grow in God's grace. Do you understand that? The scriptures say that we grow in grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a process, okay? You don't just get there overnight, but you must be committed to the process. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, uh, you got to be committed to the process. Oh, it was the 76ers building their team. They had the little slogan, 
uh, that, that it was a process. Uh, you got to be committed to the process. Uh, uh, but you got to be committed to the process. And you got to believe, hallelujah, that by grace, everything that God has for me, everything that God desires for me is going to take place. Now, in chapter 1, it's interesting to me that what, what Paul is trying to do, he's trying to introduce himself to the people at Rome because they've never seen him before. But he has a calling on his life. And he wants, watch this, he wants to partnership with the Romans that they might be, that he might be able to take the gospel even as far west as Spain. And, 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 and so he wants to partnership with, with Rome. It's interesting. You, 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 you've got to understand that God has a purpose. And I'm going to leave you with this thought. I've given you a lot in this Bible study. I hope you grasp it. Hallelujah. God has purpose for you. There's nothing worse, but John, than someone who is living life without purpose. You've got to discover your purpose. You know what? I've been told a lot of stories about Christopher Columbus, but I was reading some excerpts out of a book that he wrote, a personal book. It's called The Book of Prophecies of Christopher Columbus. And you know that he, I discovered some things now you know, I understand, okay, 1492, he went to Indies, to the Indies, not to America. <laughs> I get it, okay. But, but understand this. this. This really blessed me. Now, he labored seven years trying, well, my teachers are in here. <laughs> okay, they don't teach this in the classroom. Uh, he labored seven years trying to convince European monarchs uh, to finance his seaborne exploration, okay? Took him seven years before he could get uh, somebody that was willing to support, uh, to support his ambitions. Now, this is what blessed me, and I'm going to read out of the book, uh, Prophecies, what, it, what he wrote. He recorded a remarkable perspectives of his voyage. He was not selling or exploring for himself, but he was selling, watch this, for the will of God. Now, I ain't never read that in no book. But it was in his book. He was selling by the will of God. He wrote, I prayed to the most merciful Lord about my heart's great desire. And he gave me the spirit and the intelligence for the task. Seafaring, astronomy, geometry, arithmetic, Skill in drafting, spheres, spherical maps, placing correctly the cities, rivers, mountains, and ports. I also studied cosmology, history, chrono chronology, and rivers, mountains, and ports. I also, oh, and then he says, he wrote, it was the Lord who put into my mind 
I could feel his hand upon me. The fact that it would be possible to sail from here to the Indies. All who heard my project rejected it with laughter, ridiculing me. There is no question that the inspiration was from the Holy Spirit because he comforted me with the Holy Scriptures. When have you heard that about Christopher Columbus? He's on a voyage and he's being encouraged by the Holy Spirit. He says, uh, I am a most unworthy sinner, but I have cried out to the Lord for grace and mercy. Y'all don't hear me talking to you. Do you understand? Christopher Columbus is acknowledging that God has had given him a purpose. You understand? Hallelujah. And the purpose that God had given him, he was being directed and even comforted by the scriptures and by the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know that if it would work for Christopher Columbus, if it would work for Paul, I come to tell you, it'll work for y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Find your purpose in the Holy Ghost. Don't just live to be living, but live, hallelujah, to complete your assignment. Live, hallelujah, to finish the purpose in which God intended for your existence. Hallelujah. That's the reason why I can celebrate my mother's life, hallelujah, and others who have gone before us. I can celebrate them because, like Paul, they were not just living to die. They were living to finish. Hallelujah. You got to finish. Paul says, I've finished my course. Hallelujah. Jesus, you know, it can't be that uh, you just live to get old. That can't be your purpose because Jesus only lived, what, 33, 33 and a half years? That, that's not longevity. But he wasn't living, hallelujah, hallelujah, for old age. He was living to finish. So that's why you can catch him, hallelujah, on Calvary's cross, hallelujah. You can catch him, hallelujah, saying it is finished. He couldn't give up the ghost until it finished. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He couldn't go back, hallelujah, until he was finished. Some of Paul's desire in, Ro in Romans was to partnership with the Romans to finish his course. And I'm finishing this lesson. Hallelujah. I hope you're enjoying me as much as I'm enjoying you. Oh, I love his word. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I love his word. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you to do as Paul did. Discover your purpose. Hallelujah. And trust God to lead and guide you to fulfill it. It may seem impossible to others. Watch this. They may laugh at you. Who am I talking to online? They may ridicule you. But you got to know what God 
has placed in your heart to do. You got to learn to hear the voice of God. Hear the voice. And then the lesson that Elijah teaches us, I think it's in 1 King 19. He say, after he got through with this hearing God on Mount Carmel, answer by lightning, <laughs> answer by fire, the Bible says, the wind, there was a strong wind. But God was not in the wind. He said it was an earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. But God spoke to Elijah in a still, quiet voice. Hallelujah. It's not saying that that's the only way God can speak to you. But just tell God, any way you speak to me, just speak to me. Speak, O oh God, thy servant heareth thee. Hallelujah. Lead me. And where you lead me, I'll follow. Let's leave here tonight longing to know God and to know his will and his purpose for our life. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise.